The Paneling Tools plugin for Rhino will create a Paneling Tools drop-down menu. Here you can generate a paneling grid, and this is the first step in creating any paneling routine. I'm going to choose this first option, Grid Array, and this will run the command PT Grid Array. The command line asks for a base point, and this base point represents the lower left-hand corner in a linear grid of points. In the command line, you can pick the number of points as well as the spacing between them. You can also choose whether or not you'd like to group the resulting series of points into one selection. I'm not grouping them together so that I can select the first point in the grid, and I'll open up Object Properties. This point already has a name associated with it, and that name indicates its row and column location within this grid. If you go through the different points in the grid, you'll see that name update to reflect its location in both row and column. This naming structure within the grid of points is at the heart of every paneling routine. The shape of the grid doesn't matter. It's the named relationship between a point and its neighbors that will let it be used for a paneling routine. I'm going to control G here to group those together, just to make it easier to select them all at the same time. And then I'm going to deform the grid. I'll use the bend command from the transform dropdown menu. And the naming structure is preserved even after I bend this grid or deform it in some way. So I can still use it. Under the Paneling Tools drop-down menu, I'll choose Panel Grid. And this will run the PT Panel Grid command. You can select any point in the grid. Press Enter. If you have a base surface, you can select it at this time. If you don't, just press Enter. And then you'll see these options for a pattern and different types of geometry that will be created when you complete this command. Let's use box for the first example. That'll be the pattern. If you choose add edges, a separate curve on each edge of each panel will be created. Add face borders will make a single curve around the border of each panel. Add faces will make a single surface, but it won't necessarily be a flat surface for each panel. And that's dependent on the shape of the grid. You can also choose to make only flat faces but depending again on the shape of the grid, those face edges might not meet up with their neighbor. You can pick to make a polygonal mesh, and also whether or not you want to group the panels into one selection set. The idea behind paneling tools is that you can select the panel grid and use it again with a different pattern quickly. And this allows you to sketch ideas. So I'm going to make three different ideas for this panel routine very quickly, just by picking a different pattern, which is that first option. Now there's another way to use the Paneling Tools plugin that's very popular, and that's to start with an existing surface. So if I make a sphere, under the Paneling Tools dropdown, also in Generate Paneling Grid, I'll pick this option, Grid Surface UV. The command line asks for a surface, enter, and just like in the linear grid, we get to pick the number of points in both directions of the surface. We can then use that for a panel routine. This time I have a base surface, so I'll select it during that step. And there is the panel routine. You can easily make custom 2D as well as custom 3D patterns using paneling tools for Rhino. I'll cover how to do that in additional videos.